Hey guys, right, you should watch this video. It's not gonna be snazzy with lots of like fancy editing. This is just gonna be very raw, but it's gonna be very valuable. Let me tell you why it's gonna be valuable. So this is an email that I've just received from someone and I'm gonna keep them anonymous. I'm gonna keep the company that they're talking about anonymous. But this is a guy who is a maintenance engineer, really wants to get into BMS and is trying to get into BMS. So building management systems like building control, building automation. He's a maintenance engineer. And it re this really piss pisses me off because I see this all the time. And this is just like evidence. This is just a great example of the industry and what people go through and just the arrogance of some people, you know, that, that should be encouraging people to get into the industry, to help grow it, to help yeah help their businesses really and it just infuriates me especially when people like this this chap here they're really trying they're they're doing all they can and there's arseholes that are just putting up roadblocks and stopping people from progressing in it oh i tell you um so anyway i want to read through this email that he sent to me and i want to give genuine honest real truth for feedback um i've actually already responded privately to him um with a loom video like this and i thought sod it i'm gonna go through this so everyone else can see and hopefully benefit and anyone that's in this chap's position as a maintenance engineer trying to do the same thing i want to speak some truths to you so hopefully it builds some confidence and and doesn't make you feel like shit like they have done with with this chap here because it's it's not fair um so let me let me go through it um this hasn't been formatted this is just like a raw email that i've just copied into a a, a google doc and i've just removed a couple of confidentiality things that you know where he mentions the company um so it's going to be quite raw it's not going to be fancy edited i'm just going to go through this and i'm going to go through each point and then speak my truth what I believe, what I what I know at the end of the day. Um, you can believe me or, or not, I don't really care. But hopefully this is gonna help some people. So he goes, hey Chris, I'd prefer if uh, that, that bit's irrelevant. I'm a maintenance engineer, multi-skilled to be precise, and every single BMS company that I've gone for is always an old, fat, bald man who interviews me. This is hilarious. So, and I've heard this multiple times now, the BMS industry, the average age of a BMS engineer is like 55. Like all the engineers are dying out and there's no new talent coming into the industry. So there's there's a lot of demand for new engineers coming in. Um, so yeah, I, I, I know the types of people you're talking about. <laughs> anyway, the first thing is, so BMS guy who comes to my site to carry out their terrible works, the company name is, oh, redacted that to be specific you may know or not i didn't know them to be fair who do not teach when i ask them tech questions they just come back with one word answers then laugh arrogantly when they finish and ask me why i'm asking and that th that this should only be dealt with by bms wizards yeah sure mate yeah like this is a big problem in the industry and i see it not only in the bms industry um to be fair, I've seen this less in the BMS industry, but certainly in the home automation and high-end residential um, automation, certainly in AV, you know, I see this a lot, like just arrogant arrogance, basically, and people looking down on other people wanting to get into the industry, certainly looking down on electricians. Um, so there is an arrogance and it's, I mean, what can you do? Um, yeah, there's just arseholes in the, in the industry and it's a real shame and they're arrogant and the, you know, the best thing you can do is, is just uh, outwork them, outlearn them and then, you know, that's, that's yeah, anyway. Next point, um, when I go for interviews, it's like this. I tell them everything, how a BMS system works and then they cut me off and say, I know how it works, do you have experience? I say no because I'm not a liar. Then the interview ends really awkwardly. I'm going to start lying after I spend a few days with you. Um, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. 
Now, this is really, and I, I talk, I've been talking to people more recently about this because this keeps coming up. Like, what, like an employer, what experience do you have? And they're talking about like time served usually, like, because they think, or, or recruiters as well, they think, okay, well, time served tells me that they've been able to stay in this industry for X amount of time. But the, the thing is, that doesn't prove anything um, when you're talking about experience in this context, in, in time served context, because you can be in the industry your whole career, like 20, 20 years. That doesn't mean you're any good. That doesn't mean you know what you're talking about. Like you could just be the sort of literally does the bare minimum, but just enough to not get fired and never do any anything more, never doing any sort of education or upskilling, like even within work, let alone outside of work. So do you know what I mean? So I could say I've got 20 years experience, but I could be absolute trash. Um, so it's really important when you when you hear that word experience, and this is my take, this is my opinion, but this is coming, I'm a business owner. I've been an employee, I've been a self-employed contractor, I've, I'm now a business owner. Um, with with an employee, only one employee at the moment, going to be two soon. Um, I don't say employee; I say they're more team members. They 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 help me. They're you know that's how I think about it anyway. Um, but you experience. It's like, well, what do you know? Really, that's what I care about as a business owner, as an employer. And you know, not all employers and business owners are arrogant assholes like these people. But that's what's important: is what do you know. And can you actually do it? Can you actually walk the talk? You know, have you got the walk as well as the talk? Um, or are you all fart, no poo? That's the question. So can you back up what you say? So like when people ask for you, do you have experience? It's like, well, I would go down. I would just kind of put the, I'd remove the time aspect out of it. Um, and I would just start talking about the things I know. Like, so experience, yeah. So I've got experience in this. So let me talk you through this. Blah 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 blah. Um, yes, I've got experience in doing this. Let me talk you through this and give you some examples. And then if they then specifically ask, like, how long have you been in the industry? Like, well, if this guy is a, a maintenance engineer, or if it's someone else who's an electrician. I would just say that I would just say, well, I've been in the industry or I've got I've got experience. And if you're looking for, for a time frame, then it's this, you know, I've been a maintenance engineer for this long. Or even if you were a different engineer before that, it's like if you're looking for time experience, you know, the engineering, electrical, it all ties into BMS at the end of the day anyway. So. Anyway, yeah. Um, hopefully you get my point on that. So number three, a majority of these BMS guys do not want to share their full knowledge in the field. I do not know why one guy will not put their position in jeopardy. Yeah, this is this is another classic. And I've seen this not only in this industry, in BMS and home automation and AV and all of that. It's just a general thing that I see. Um, and it seems to be more more prevalent in technical industries and it's because people are exactly that they 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 feel scared they're of a scarcity mindset rather than abundancy mindset and they're they're afraid if they tell you what they know that you're gonna go past them and then you're gonna push them down and they're gonna lose control lose power um and they're scared at the end of the day, that's why people don't share. And this is my opinion again, guys. Like you know, take it or leave it. This is my opinion based on my experience, how I see the world, how I see the industry, how I see people. Um, they're fucking scared, and yeah, they don't they don't want you to be better than them because then it makes them look shit. Simple as that. So they're knowledge hoarders, and we've all we all know a knowledge hoarder or two. Um, so that's that basically. Best thing you can do is don't go to them for knowledge, get your knowledge elsewhere and then just outwork them, um, out knowledge them. Um, so they never have control over you. So they're never getting that satisfaction from you going to them asking 
for knowledge and help. Like just, you don't need these people, like genuinely. And what you realize with these people is where you're at at the moment, it might appear that they know what they're talking about. But actually when you get good and you actually know your shit, you'll realize that the vast majority of people do the bare minimum to, 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 to not get fired. And they, over time, they manage to get into more senior positions, but they don't actually know because they don't actually know their stuff because they don't really care. They're not actually that curious. They will never do anything off their own back to actually go deeper into something. So you realize that actually over, over a bit of time of like really dedicated hard work and study and gathering knowledge from, you know, the right sources in the right order and all of that, you realize that when you st when you start talking to these people, you might have like a bit of like um, imposter syndrome to start with. But if you can get over that and you start talking to these people and you start like asking them more detailed questions about the technical stuff that they they talk about or they pretend they know, you start questioning it and like going deeper into that. You realize they don't really know anything. And I'm, I don't mean to sound arrogant in any way. Um, it's just because I'm, I've been there and I've done it and I've been so curious out of like, I suppose, anxiety and fear of not being good enough to be in this industry. I've like done, I've gone completely overboard, maybe, um, through like, you know, um, insecurity really. But then that's helped me see that like when I then start talking to people in the industry, like a lot of them don't really know what they're on about. So don't don't rely on these don't don't just just avoid these people just don't give them the satisfaction these these knowledge hoarders um fourth point so this the company that i've removed here um or the company's project manager told me i need 12 years before i can get into the field this was the recent interview i was like what the fuck is he smoking <laughs> there's no way it takes that long that is absolute bullshit complete bullshit um last um not my last client but the last client that i worked with very closely a guy called mo absolute machine and was 100 percent driven to make the leap from being an electrician to working in the, the bms in, industry so he me and him worked together um, he had no previous BMS experience, like experience, you know, whether that's knowledge or time. And within seven weeks, he got a job offer um, to be BMS service engineer. So that is absolute bullshit, complete bullshit. Um, it just is. I mean, I can't believe someone would even say that. It's just they really don't want you to to progress into into a position in the BMS industry. It's like they, they're trying to really scare you off from, from, from even attempting, but don't let it because that is complete trash. Um, they look down on me as I'm a maintenance engineer who has the drive and passion to get into this industry, but they just see me as some meaty guy who they think does not know anything about BMS. Well, prove them wrong, man. <laughs> just prove them wrong. Um, and, do it for yourself, you know. Chris, mate, I'm so determined to get on here level and beyond and just flex on them. Yeah, that's that's really satisfying. If you're going through this sort of shit, that is the best way to get back at them. Um, you know, even if you're not flexing on them in, in public, you know that you you know in your head that you're flexing on them. Um, I've been through the schematics of our third floor kitchen air source unit or um, air air handling unit, God, forget my abbreviations there. Uh, I'll read that again. I've been through the schematics of our third floor kitchen air handling unit server room, as well as the digital inputs and digital outputs on the software points, and they don't match. Clearly, and he's still talking about this, this company, who the BMS company that did the install and the controls and the commissioning and whatnot. Clearly, they don't know how to commission their own work as there are so many things missing and he's saying that he's keeping this to himself. Again, I see this all the time. I'll go to a site and things haven't been commissioned properly because the BMS company, they, they get their pay or they get like, it's the, the final percentage of the project that gets paid. 
but they haven't commissioned it properly. They haven't optimized it. They haven't come back in a month or two's time to adjust the programming, to double check that things are actually running as the client wants it. See it all the time. I go to panels on sites and everything's just in hand, not running in auto via the PLC. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah. <laughs> like there's some BMS businesses that shouldn't be in business. Genuinely, they should. But if the problem is, is there's such a shortage that they're able to. There's such a huge demand and such a shortage of supply, they're able to get away with it. It's disgusting. And these poor clients are like paying good amounts of money and then they're not really getting the right service. Um, and these, these businesses can, can give a shit. They're just taking full advantage of it. Um, so, yeah, I believe it comes to one... That's arrogance, yeah. So he's basically saying they're arrogant, which they are. That's all from my side. See you end of the month, mate. So that's it. Hope you took something from it. See you later.